Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. We've got a full step-by-step -step guide here today showing you how to fit a full timing belt kit and water pump on this 2009 Ford Mondeo 2 litre TDCI. Uh, this, this engine is fitted in quite a few other Fords um, so, so the same procedure will apply. Um, it's in the Cougar and some of the other models as well. Uh, there might just be a few slight differences but the basics to the cam belt kit and water pump will be the same. So. Just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, if you just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. At any point during the video, if you want to just check out the description below, there's links to all the tools used, all the parts, the part numbers, and where you can get them from for the timing belt kit and water pump. We're also going to be doing this tonight without actually removing the starter motor, uh, which the proper procedure on auto data does state to remove the starter motor. Uh, which is actually to access our locking pin for the flywheel um, but there's actually a little cover that we can move uh, remove and then we can just just use a paint mark from the flywheel against the actual casing of the gearbox so, but i'll run you through that later on uh, but for now we'll get into the video right, so we've just done an engine service on this one tonight so i've got the under tray off ready underneath but it's a really simple step that you've only got eight ten mil bolts and a little torx at the back um, we can just see cam belts here under this case in there. We're going to be replacing the cam belt and water pump tonight. Um, we're using the gates kit. I'll just put some links in the description below for the uh, part number and um, where you can get them from. I'm going to fit a new auxiliary belt as well since it's got to come off at the same time. Uh, but yeah, we're going to put a new water pump on it. It all comes part of the kit, so uh, might as well since it's running on the cam belt. So if that fails at any other point, the cam belt's going to be done again for the same job. So, uh, but yeah, it's cam belt in there, it's a new bolt. A tensioner, there. a little idler pulley, and the uh, the belt itself. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get it up in the air and um, just get any of the underneath work done. Because once we um, once we get to a certain stage, we're going to have to take this engine mount off here, and then we're only going to be able to work at a certain level. So um, just save us uh, messing about underneath while we're using the ramp. So uh, we're using two poster ramp today does make the job a little bit easier um, but if I was going to do it on the floor all I'd do is just jack it up really high on this driver's side front corner and get the wheel off there just to give us some access um, but yeah it's pretty doable on the floor so but I'll get it up on the ramp now and show you what we've got to do underneath to start with So when you've got the wheel out of the way, you're just going to want some access um, behind the wheel arch here, just to make it a bit easier. So we've got a couple of uh, screws just on the side. Uh, there's one there, another one just tucked in up there. Uh, and then might, we might need to take out just that 10mm there, and 10mm plastic one there as well. And we should, that should be enough for us just to fold the arch back out of the way. So with the arch line and folded back there, I'm just get a bit more access now. There's actually three more eight mils just on the underneath here as well. Uh, but now that's out, that's out, we can see the crank pulley just here. Um, we're gonna need to take the alternator belt off as well. And you've got a 15 mil spanner. That's the tensioner there. And all you need to do is just put the spanner on that. And if you just turn it up to the left there, that releases the tension. And when it's slack there, you can pull the belt off. So we'll get that off next. Um, it does say on the auto data procedure that you have to take the starter motor out to get the timing marks in the flywheel um, but we're actually going to do it without taking the starter motor off there's a little cover just up here uh, this little plastic cover just on the side of the flywheel um, if it's not 100 percent sure whether it's floating pulley or not yet basically but if it is a floating pulley it means there's no keyway in the crank so just to be safe we're just going to uh, with this cover off we can just put a paint mark on the two for the flywheel there against the, uh, the body of the gearbox there and we'll know that the timing marks are okay there just in case 
Uh, we whip the crank pulley bolt off and it is a floating pulley, so uh, but I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a bit. And we'll just whip the um whip the alternator belt off for now. Right, so most of the underneath work's done now. We're just gonna drop it down and start taking some of the top end stuff out. Because um, we're going to mark the cam, or pin the cam if there's a, a pin hole in it first, before marking that flywheel. Um, forgot to say, just before you take the alternator belt off, sometimes worth just drawing out a quick diagram of the belt routing. Because just sometimes when you're putting it back on later, it's a little bit hard to remember the exact routing, where it goes. Right, it's the first time I've done a cam belt on one of these tonight, so I'll try and talk you through it in as best of detail as possible. Uh, but if there's any bits that I don't quite get right, I'll just back step on them. Um, as I do them because I'm going to try and get away with um, not fully taking some bits out of the way but just to start we've just got to unbolt this uh, 8 mil bolt on there pull that uh, power steering pipe it is out of the way and um, we're going to unclip these fuel hoses I might unclip them down there there's two little clips there uh, all you need to do is just flick the, the tabs out there's a white one and a red one there and we'll get them up and out of the way get a few of these bits of wire and loom off um, then we're going to get the jack with a bit of wood underneath the sump and we're going to jack it up just slowly just to take the weight of the engine as soon as we see it just starting to lift we're going to take this engine mounting off and see we've got two big bolts on the uh, two big nuts sorry on that side of the mount there and we've got another two bolts holding the mountain to the side of the chassis there so we'll get all them off and that should start to give us a bit of room then I'll show you underneath we've just got the uh, jack with a little bit of wood there just on the sump and all we're going to do is just lightly jack it just until it starts to uh, lift the engine there just so that we can see it's taking the load and then we can release the engine mount so we'll get them two nuts and then we'll have the two bolts off now it's just got 21 mil socket for the two nuts there. actually a stud will probably come out with the bolt. There are actually two studs on there um, but if you're gonna you wouldn't take that out it might just make it a little bit easier but if you do you want an E12 socket there. And then you want a 15 mil socket for the two bottom bolts there. So now the mount's out of the way, see a bit more. We're just going to take this little 10mm uh, off there, which is part of this bracket. Just get that out of the way, it just slides into the cover there. And then we'll take this top section of the cover off. Um, see there's a 10mm there for it. Uh, another, another one just down below it there, behind that bracket. And uh, there'll be a few more a little bit lower down, but possibly on this side. We'll just get that out of the way now.
And so that's that casing out of the way. And just look down the bottom end of it there. There was just a little, uh, just had to unclip the wiring loom just from them two little bits. And then there was a 10 mil bolt there. So had to get off a bit lower down at the bottom just to get that out of the way. Right, so now the cover's off, just try and show you in a bit more detail. Um, normally we'd take this mounting bracket here off, but uh, this bolt there goes through to hold the actual idler pulley on. So we don't want to take it out quite yet because um, we're just going to get the timing set as well first. So what we're going to do now before we do any more is just put a um, socket on the bottom crank pulley, turn it round, and we're going to line the this little locating hole up in there. Uh, there should be a pin hole for us to line that up to. So if we spin that round to locate that into place, um, we'll pin that there, and then we'll mark the a little bit of the flywheel that I showed you earlier on. So, yeah, it looks like it has actually had a cam belt on it before. Someone's put a paint mark on the on the camshaft there. So, um, but hopefully, if we do it this way, we'll save us actually having to take the starter motor off to pin the flywheel correctly. So. So all I've done now is just rig up 22mm socket, quite a long reach extension there, just so you can get in on the crankshaft and we can turn the engine over by hand that way. Um, you always just, you don't, it's not really ideal to turn the engines backwards. Um, you can do if you are to do, but it's uh, just to line them up, but always, uh, we'd always turn the engine over clockwise. So, so all we're going to do now is turn that round with the ratchet another person watching and um, we'll just see if we can find a, an owl to line that up with so we'll just do that So just so you, you'll be roughly in about that position there. Uh, just looking through the mirror. I mean, you, when it's turned around, you can quite clearly see it through these bigger spacings in the camshaft. Um, but there's like a little recess hole. I'll just try and show you through there. Um, obviously, we've got to turn it just a tiny little bit more. And all we're going to do is use um, a drill bit that fits really snug into the back hole. And then that'll lock it to the cam there. So the cam wheel can't turn once the pin's in. Uh, so now it's in line, just got it uh, found about 8 mils about bang on the right side. So we've got an 8 mil bolt here, and I'll just try that. You can just see that's nice and tight, right recessed into the hole behind it. So now that that's in there, the camshaft itself will be locked in a position, so we hadn't really even got to mark it. Sometimes you can mark it if you wanted as a bit of a backup, but I'm pretty happy tonight just to, to pin that in there. Now what we're going to do, so just in case this is a floating pulley, I'm just going to go underneath now and just mark that flywheel um, just before I buzz the uh, bottom pulley off. It's just if it's a floating pulley and you buzz that pulley off, um, it'll upset the tire and I'll have no sort of record of the mark. So as long as I paint mark the flywheel against the case in there, I'll have a definite mark to go off. So I'll just do that quick now. I'm just going underneath the car, just to where I pulled that little front cover off there earlier on. So, um, just try and focus it, but we can see the teeth of the flywheel there. And all I'm going to do is paint mark one of the tooth on the flywheel. And just mark that in line with a casing on the gearbox there. Just try zooming a bit closer. See that? And all that shows is that uh, if now that I know, I can just turn the crank, put the crank pulley back on and I can turn that and I know where my mark is to get it exactly bang on to where it was. Um, so I can't go wrong with that really. So. There is actually a keyway in there. Just take the bottom pulley off now and see the keyway right through the middle there so and this is a little ring here that the 
uh, crankshaft sensor there picks up on so that ring comes off sometimes a little bit tight but just give that a little bit of a wiggle and so all I'm going to do now can't quite get that off without the cover off um, but all I'm going to do now is get this bottom cover off Here you can see we've got some 10 mils on it might just remove the um, crank crank sensor I don't know yet maybe not it might not be in the way to be fair uh, but you can see there's some 10 mil bolts for this plastic casing so I'm going to get that casing out of the way next and then you can just pull this off um, you can't really it only locates one way because again it goes on the the peg there with a the keyway so, so that's for the uh, crank sensor to pick up on but if we get that off pull this little uh, plate out of the way and then we'll actually paint mark the crankshaft pulley itself to somewhere on the block but I'll show you that in a minute I'll we'll just get that casing out of the way Right, the, cover, the cover's nearly off now. There's three 10 mil bolts in it, but you're just going to need a, a Torx, I think it's a 45. Uh, oh, sorry, Torx 47 socket. Uh, just the auxiliary tensioner just gets in the way of it. So, tensioner's this piece here, and there's a bolt just in the centre there. So, if we just get that out, just pull it, it's just one bolt that holds it on, get the tensioner out of the way, and then we can release the bottom cover. You can just see down the bottom here now. We just took that plate off there as well. The cover's on, and you can see the, the cam bolt there as well now. So, might have just helped to be fair having that um, paint mark on the flywheel itself because although it's got a keyway, you can just see there's quite a little, sometimes have these in these points, there's actually quite a bit of movement there from the keyway to the actual pulley. So, just helps us get it absolutely bang on having that paint mark as well. So. So we've got tension out of the way now. That's just allowed us to get that bottom cover off. Um, but I've just put it. Uh, just flick the cover down the side there there's just one bit attached to it um, but yeah i've had a bit of an issue on a cougar before it's definitely well worth putting them timing marks on the flywheel because that bit that bit of extra free play in there i've had a cougar that struggled to get the timing on and it was just out enough so that it didn't start afterwards so um yeah it's well worth putting that timing mark on there um, but the water pump itself is just up there you can see it's actually leaking on this one so definitely needed replacing as well the next thing we're going to do now is just uh, come up top and slacken this bolt on the tensioner there and then we can uh, drop the actual cam belt off now the idler pulley is held in with this bolt there um, on, on, on a few models I've had problems with these engine mounting bolts off this bracket here um, round, you know, not coming out very well. Um, it's caused us quite a bit of hassle in the past. So I'm going to do it, do the job of leaving this bracket in place. The only thing I like to do is take this bolt out here, slide the idler out, and then we'll be able to slide the new one in and bolt it back up. And it'll just save any hassle with these bolts. This one's done 230,000, so I don't think they're going to come out very well. Uh, but we'll slacken that tension off now and get the belt off. Um, take this idler out, and then we'll get the water pump off. I just think about 13 mil spanner for the uh, tensioner. I'll let you know the correct torque setting for this later on, but I think it was oh, I've done that up a bit tight in the past. Drop the tensioner out of the way there. As I had one before because it's an INA one, so now that that's out, I should be able to get the cam bolt off. That doesn't look, uh, doesn't look, it's a bit hard to say, but there's a little bit perishing there, but doesn't look too bad. I don't know exactly how long it's been on, so 
And we've got over to get that out of the way. Right, then just one sixteen mil for the idler pulley bolt at the back there. So that's the Adler pulley slid out as well. Again, don't feel too bad actually that, but it uh, all comes part of the kit, so we might as well change that. Now that that's out of the way, we're just going to go down, um, just get the water pump out. I'll just show you the new one. That new gasket in there, paper gasket, so we're going to clean that up well when we get it out. Um, but just looking at the new one, it's just nice and easy to see that we've got uh, five bolts holding that on. So we'll get them bolts out there, I think they're 10mm leaded bolts, and uh, get the water pump out. Let's just remove the water pump, didn't put that on the camera because you won't really be able to see it very well, but there's five 11mm bolts, um, but one of them is actually a stud, so you might just need a longer reach or a deep 11mm socket just to get that one off. Um, but all the all the bolts are out now. So the pump's started leaking, it should be fairly loose, but it might not just quite be able to pull it out. So all we're gonna do is just pry. There's just a little gap. Just gotta be a bit careful. But just pry in a little gap. Let's try to focus it. Just inside there. And you can just crack the water pump away. And we've just got a drainer underneath to catch all that. So. See so someone's put it on with like a with a sort of sealer as well in the past. So. Let's get that out. Down the bottom instead. <laughs> yeah, there's the old pump there. So yeah, someone's put like a load of uh, silicon on it as well. So yeah, got to. Away with that, it's leaking anyway. So, what we're going to do now, not much better to sort of see it, but I'm just going to use a load of emery cloth, a bit of emery cloth, and just uh, I'll use a razor blade to start with and just scrape off the excess there of all that old sealer, um, and just use a little bit of emery cloth and clean that up real nice, ready for the new gasket, just to ensure we get a good seal on there. Uh, but I'll just clean that up quick and then I'll uh, go to the next step with you. Just walk, clean the water pump uh, base area up now with that uh, emery cloth and the uh, bit of uh, structure on the camera there and the uh, razor blade there. So I've just got a nice clean surface for the uh, new gasket to set up against. So the new gasket's there and all we're going to do is just sit it over the water pump so that sort of holds it quite nicely in place and we'll push the water pump up might just put one bolt in there just as we run it into into position just to hold the gasket on and just uh, put it into position nip the bolts up you don't want to be too too heavy just a light nip on the uh, 11 mil bolts there so so just so it to nips the gasket nicely we'll get that back on might not be able to film this bit because it's a bit tight down there putting it on and uh, let's just see if i can show you from underneath just, uh, where it locates as well. Uh, just while we're down here, I'll just show you this pulley where it's floating. You can see now that it's off, you can see the amount of free play there. So that's why it's really handy having that paint mark on the flywheel. Because if you can see, if you've got it that there, you're probably nearly going to be a tooth out. So it's better just to have the mark on the flywheel just to know that you've got that bang on right. Get the water pump on now, and then we'll swap the uh, idler and tensioner over. So that's the water pump all nipped up now. All you want to do is just run around the bolts, just run them in lightly, and once they're all lightly nipped, just go around them one by one, 
I'll just give them a proper nip. I'll just, uh, I just did them by hand, but I'll just find you the proper torque setting out in a minute. So I'm going to look for the torque setting now to uh, put the idler pulley on and for the tensioner as well. So, so it's quite important to dip the tensioner to the right torque setting really. So you want to make sure you haven't over tightened it or under tightened it. So, uh, but I'll find that out now and we'll get the next few bits on. Yeah, I've just checked on the actual torque, proper torque settings for the water pump. And if you do want to do it properly with the torque wrench, uh, they want to be 16 newton meters. Um, but now we're going to put the idler in uh, with that bolt through the main bolt through there. The torque setting for that's 56, and then the torque setting for the tensioner bolt is 21 newton meters. But we'll get this idler in first and torque that up properly. I'm just using dig digital torque wrench today and set that to 56 newton meters. Right. Obviously, you can do it without a torque wrench, but as soon as we've got one, it's nice to do it right. Um, we'll put the tensioner on now and then we can uh, start getting the cam belt on us after that. I've just shown you on the tensioner, um, basically it bolts up there and there's a locating peg on the block of the engine, I'll just show you that in a minute, and this must go slot through that, so as long as you line that up with that you're alright, and then this is the arrow that when we've got the belt on we're going to line this arrow up with that little nog in there, um, but once the, ten once the belt's on it we'll be able to turn it with this allen key and then that'll run that arrow around to there. Um, but I'll show you that when putting the belt on. The important thing at the minute is just to slide the tensioner in so that this runs over the guide peg. I'll just show you that quick before we put it on. So just see. I'll just try and get the torch under that. You can just see your bolt hole just in the centre of the camera now. And then just up to the side of it, there's a dowel in the head there, and that's where it's going to locate the tensioner there to hold the tensioner still. Just show you again, you can just see now under there where that's located around the dowel. And all you want to do is just run it in finger tight, just run it in finger tight and then just back it off just slightly because you need to, it can't be nipped so that it just allows you to be able to turn the tensioner there uh, so we can lock it off once the belt's on. If we just leave that, leave that slightly loose now, we'll start uh, wrapping the belt round and getting that into place. Obviously, I'm putting the belt on, the camshaft is locked solid, so we ain't got to worry about that at all now. Um, but we're just going to have to make sure that the actual timing mark that we set earlier on, on the flywheel, doesn't move. So make sure that stays bang on in the right place. Um, we'll get the belt on, try and show you that in a bit more detail. Um, when fitting the cam belt, I do these for fitting the gates belt tonight. These do have arrows on to show you the rotation of the belt. And it wants to be running the direction that the engine uh, turns over. So if a belt hasn't got the arrows on, you want to set it so that the writing is reading so that you can read it again for the direction that the engine's turning over. So, uh, But yeah, this one's got arrows on. So uh, we'll start looping that belt round. And what you want to do is keep the belt tight along the... Just pull that belt out. So. And keep the belt tight along the right-hand side. So it runs up around the cam here, around the idler, around the crank. Then you want the slackest side to be where the tensioner is. And the idea is you can then take the slack up with the tensioner. I'm trying to show you that when we've just got the belt on. But we'll uh, set it into place now. Wait a minute, I've just put it on the crank at the bottom there. Just hooked it around the idler. 
If you just keep it off a little bit, it's easier to get it tauter because your belt's straighter. And just feed it round. Right, so the belt's on all the way around now. Obviously the tension is still slack at the minute. So we've got a bit of slack here that we're going to take up in a minute. But just before we do that, we're just going to check our timing marks. Obviously we can't go wrong with the cam here. We know that's completely fixed in place. So all we need to do is go down the bottom and just check. Just make sure, I'll just push it on a little bit at the bottom there. And we're just going to check our mark with the flywheel and just see, uh, make sure that's banging line. Oh, yeah, so we've just come in now underneath, and just see the timing marks absolutely bang on there as well. So um, we did, I didn't show it on the camera, but we did just have a quick look to make sure that was in place uh, before slipping the belt on. Uh, sometimes it might be handy if you've got two here, if you've got someone underneath just to. Um, sort of try and lock it with the screwdriver or just keep an eye on it and just make sure it's bang on but as long as you make sure that when the belt is on uh, that, that mark on the on the flywheel there and your mark on the camshaft is lined up then um, you're absolutely bang on you can't really go wrong so but uh, all we're going to do now is put some tension on the belt so we'll just need an allen key just in that slot there and then we'll get a little mirror just to have a look uh, it'll be a little bit hard to show you on the camera but the, um, the little arrow that's down the back there, once we put the tension on, that arrow will move up to that point there, but I'll try to get it on the camera as best as I can for you. And then we're gonna lock the, once it's in position, lock this 30 mil bolt off, and say that wants to be 21 Newton meters, so we'll set the torque wrench up ready. Got a six mil Allen key now, which will go in that hole there. And it's got an arrow on the tensioner, to show that it goes anti-clockwise, so we need to be turning it that way there. You can just see it's starting to move at the back there. Uh, but I'll just uh, get the camera held into place. I'll we'll turn that around and then nip it up. See it's bang in line the centre of that peg now. Just bang the sort of edge on it down. I'm just going to nip the 13 mil bolt up just to grab it while keeping it still. And then we can put the torque wrench on it and just check this setting there as well. So. So should be just good enough nip to hold it, but I'll just uh, just talk it up and just check it don't move while I do it. Yeah, so that's just nipped up to 21 newton meters there. I'll just see, just try to show you a bit clearer, but it's bang in line with that center peg there on the tensioner. So everything's set right. All we're going to do now is just take the uh, bolt out of here. It's just got a little bit tight, we're trying to turn it around. We're just going to take that locking bolt out there, then we're going to do two full rotations of the crankshaft. So we're just going to put the socket on the bolt at the bottom there again, just turn it over two full times. Uh, and make sure that the lines mark uh, line up again. I'll just do that quick. Right, so we're rigged up, ready now. All we're going to do, someone's going to turn the crank over uh, by hand. I'm just going to watch this top mark here. And you could just do with someone really watching your your paint mark on your flywheel to know that you've done full row two full rotations. So if someone can just spot it coming round, obviously once, 
and then on the second time line your paint mark up on the flywheel and then they should line up bang on so we'll just get turning it over quick and just make sure that uh, that lines up So the flywheel paint marks absolutely bang on there and then the camshaft mark as well it's absolutely bang on line there so we know the timing's all spot on so they're not making no contact if the engine wouldn't turn over for any reason and it was just stopping you know that your timing's out but so with your timing marks you can't really go too wrong so uh, now that that's right we can start putting it all back together and uh, we'll put the to start with we'll put the casing on at the bottom and uh, then we can get the the little reluctor ring on uh, for the cutting sensor to pick up on and then we can buzz the bottom pulley back up as well and that'll lock everything all back into place so uh, but yeah we'll start getting it back together uh, so we've got the bottom casing on now just then three ten mils holding that on we just slid this little reluctor wheel over the uh, the camshaft there and just over the keyway and then we're just going to put the crank pulley back on and again you just need to make sure you just line the keyway up there as well so that just slots on into place there and then we've got the new uh, bolt and it's got a new bolt so it's all coming with some little tie on it there as well just had to swap the washer over and uh, we're just going to buzz that up with the gun but we will torque it up as well uh, I'll just let you know the correct torque setting in a minute for that, once we've got it on. Oh no, it's just... I think we'll be alright at that to be honest, but so if you do want to torque it correctly, uh, 70 newton meters, 62 degrees with a torque wrench. Uh, but we could just double check that afterwards when it's down. You can lock the flywheel to do it, or you might need to put it in gear and just put your foot on the brake. So obviously we'll just try to turn the engine over as well. So um, that's on now. All we're going to do is get back to work on the top. Just put the tensioner, auxiliary tensioner back in because it was in front of that case in there. And we can put this front cover back on and start building the, the rest of it back up. So now that's on, I'm just going to put the engine mount back into place. We might have to just alt the engine slightly with a jack to get it nicely lined up. Right, most of this is all built up at the top now. Next thing we're going to do is just take the coolant cap off. Just going to fill the reservoir up. Just get some coolant in there, just to uh, just give it a chance to run around a bit while we lift it up in the air and do the rest. We're going to put the alternator belt on now. Uh, I'll just show you a quick route in from the diagram on the computer, just in case you didn't take note of it before. So, uh, but we'll get the new belt on and uh, go from there. I think what I'll do first is just feed the belt through from the top 
uh, and then we'll get it up in the air because the engine mounts on there we can drop the jack down and we can get the belt on Just in case you forgot to take note of the alternator belt routing before you took it off, I'll just show you, leave that on there for a few few seconds just to let you get a quick uh, idea of the routing. So it can be quite tricky to work it out sometimes. So. Uh, but we'll get the belt on now. Belt on. All you got to do when fitting on that belt, just go around after, just have a quick look, just make sure that it's sat correctly on all the ribs of all the pulleys. Otherwise, if you start it up with it just hanging off on it, might just shred the belt quick. So, as long as you know that's on all the ribs, it'll be bang on when you start it up. Um, but all we've got to do now, just quickly pop the uh, light arch liner back on, get the wheel on. I'm um, going to leave the under tray off because we'll run it up and bleed it up while well, just checking, making sure it's been sealed and not leaking. So. But we're nearly there now. Right, so everything's back together now. All I've got to do is just talk the uh, driver's front wheel up. It must be about 130 newton meters. Well, we're just going to strike it up now. I just turned it off a sec just to finish the video off but everything's done now all i do from now on is just check the coolant keep it topped up and just run it for you will be running it for about five minutes on the ramp with a cap off that'll bleed the system up um, just check it underneath for any leaks make sure everything's sealed up and while it's running if you just check the alternator belt just make sure it's running round well uh, just check your fuel pipes where you've had them off um, i haven't actually put a new belt on this one in the end because the tensioner is knackered and it wants a new auxiliary tensioner so i'm gonna to have to order a tensioner and i'll put the new belt on when we fit that uh, but uh, yeah not too bad a job really um hope the video helped if it did give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel um, but i'll put some links in the description below to all the parts used and all the tools as well so uh, but i've got a few more videos on the there as well for you to check out but thanks for watching and we'll see you next time